Okay, good morning, everybody. It's still July 28th, 2011, <laughs> and we're here with my friend uh, Javier Gonzalez, and uh, we've got two others uh, that are up, and this will be the third, and probably the last in the series with Javier, but I'm encouraging Javier to get some of his own material up yes. there. <laughs> Let's do it right away. Javier, what is your email address again? Hobtrumpet at earthling.net. So that's J-A-V, the word trumpet, at earthling.net. Okay, great. So <clears throat> let's get back to what, what were you doing as, as part of your uh, warm-up, mm -hmm. kind of your point of reference material. Let's grab a quick recap here. The first thing that you do when you warm up is... Uh, start from a major F arpeggio going down to the pedal F okay. on the lead pipe. Just a quick... Mm -hmm. Good, and then you go down by half steps, mm -hmm. and then you were showing us the scales yeah. that you do. Okay, now this is after doing it for a while. For a, for a newcomer to this, mm -hmm. uh, you'd recommend taking it a little slower. Definitely a, lot, a little slower. What, what about if, like, uh, you say going down isn't, isn't as hard as going up, right? Yes, yes. So yes. after you go down, then the next step is to go up? Yes. Okay, can you show us a little bit of that? So you start in the same pitch, F, and you go mm -hmm. up the major arpeggio. Make sure it's, uh, it's the right one. Mm -hmm. That was close. Good, <laughs> yeah. okay, good. Good, mm. and, and that, that break to the, the second note, right? Yeah. The A, that's tricky. It, it is tricky because um, on, on the trumpet, you don't feel it at all. On the mouthpiece, you don't feel it because there's no breaks in the mouthpiece. Right. But on the trumpet, uh, on the V-pipe itself, you know, you, you have, if you go up and down, you know, it has, yes. you know, it pops in there. Right. You know, so if you, your, your job with this exercise is to bend through that break so you don't hear the break going. Mm -hmm. And you again, know. how does that help your playing? Uh, it, it forces you uh, to, to, you know, you're, you're working on, on mm -hmm. slurring all mm -hmm. the time, you're working on chromatics all the time, so you get airspeed and breath right. control. Uh, this thing makes your tongue uh, that aren't, aren't, aren't common for the lead pipe. Right. So when you're getting your tongue to go to that position to pop in the, your break area, yes. you're, you're making it become very sensitive to get that pitch without it hitting the break. You just blow right through nice. the break. Now, mm -hmm. now, as you go higher, say you do the F, mm -hmm. Uh, once you get past that first break, is there another break? Like I would imagine, once you get the A, then the C pops in pretty easily. Yeah, the C will pop in very easily. Right, and Just, then yeah. and then after that, what happens? Uh, you, you do that chromatically down, you know, F major mm -hmm. thing. You actually start doing the scale, which is even harder than arpeggio. Let's hear the scale. Man. saying it's the efficiency that you're building up here exactly. by, by doing this kind of routine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you, you can play this even higher, you can do this two octaves, you yeah. say? Yeah, yeah. Could you do demonstrate sure. that? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, now when when you go to play that on a trumpet, mm -hmm. you feel like uh, it's what? It's it's, very, it's more efficient because you're you're not just uh, uh, playing loud to get the high notes, which a lot of people, right. uh, younger musicians, will have the, the misconception of thinking that you know volume will get in your range, right. which is true for a small moment and then it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when you're playing up in the high register, it's always best if you want to get a good grasp on it, is to play high, soft, and efficient. Can you demonstrate mm -hmm. that? Kind of building up a dynamically from a, a, say a, a comfortable soft to medium soft dynamic before you get loud. I would Build say stay soft as long as you can, because mm -hmm. volume. I mean, volume is easy to to, to, to work with. How do, how do you get the volume then? Uh, well, volume you just push from your diaphragm. You know, you actually can take a good breath of air, mm -hmm. and since you're Start already, with that, how, how do you take a good breath? What's your concept of? Uh, good breathing. Well, you know, when we when we're just sitting here, just breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, our diaphragm is going in and out. Right. We're not going. <laughs> right. Which I see a lot of young players, you know, right. the horn and go, and that's a bad way of breathing because all the air is going. You're getting a, a sort of thin air into your into your into mm -hmm. your lungs. If you just just breathe regularly, mm -hmm. your body is built that way to mm -hmm. take that sort of air. Built so when, from the bottom yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're running or or. Now you do a lot of exercise. Yes. Don't you? Yes. You feel that helps your playing? It definitely does. 
Yeah. My, it actually makes your endurance go up so much. It does. Yeah, because you just you just know how to breathe. Right. There's you know? a there's a friend of mine out here named Nolan Shahid. Do you know Nolan? Mm -hmm. Great trumpet player. Played with Duke Ellington and uh, just was a marvelous player, jazz and lead. And uh, he runs, and he's a world champion runner. Wow. And, you know, so yeah, I I also believe in exercise is healthy. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, yeah. it only keeps you healthy. Right. You know? So you run, you bike, right? And swim as well. Swim. Mm. Great. Okay. So back to the breathing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's. So you're gonna take a breath, mm -hmm. and you. What do you think about if you're gonna take a like? So a lot of guys like. There's this whole gamut. You know, Schlossberg once told many clients that if it's easy breathing, if you don't breathe, you'll die. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you had uh, <clears throat> uh, Arnold Jacobs, who was the master uh, pedagogue about it, really getting into the nuts and bolts of breathing, but mm -hmm. he basically broke it down into wind and song. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but but you know, there's there's a lot in between. So yeah. So when when you're teaching breathing, what do you teach? Well, what I do, I actually bring out some, some, some classical etudes and we're actually breathe with the actual piece itself. Because mm -hmm. uh, there, there's no point breathing on something you don't know unless you're improvising. Right. But when you're working with a piece, of, of, you know, a piece that you're working on, you, you have areas where you can actually visually see where is a good place to take a breath. Okay. So when you have you know, three to four bar phrases mm -hmm. and you can do that in one breath, that's, that's great. So you know where you're targeting to breathe. Oh, I see. Yeah, and you always, have, you always want you know, to take in more air than you'll need okay. just to be on the safe side. Yes. But you're, you know, you're, you're, it's like reading. When you're reading a book and you're reading out loud, you're taking breaths as you're looking at the, at the words. Right. Same concept when you're reading music. Yes. Or working on music, you just you know where to breathe, you know where it's coming up. You've heard these phrases before, right? And you're practicing the piece, so you right. just know it, you know. And then do you, do you try to extend that? Say if you can play this four bars, then you say, well, now I'm going to work on being able to play it eight bars. Yeah. Is that kind of a yeah? And that's a good way of of of, of, of growing your breath support, right? You know, and I, same same thing with the lead pipe when you're doing up and down major scales and you're playing two octaves in the lead pipe with right. one breath, you have to have good breath support, right? And your air has to be very efficient. Right. You know, so it actually leaks on, it leaks on even even to that when you're playing your know, four octaves. Right. You know, you, you have to be very because I want you to, everybody to do this on one breath. That's the whole goal. Mm -hmm. Working with several octaves, you know, mm -hmm. and coming back back down with the same armature and same breath. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I have is I know <clears throat> a lot of players uh, as they get into the upper register they start using more pressure. So mm -hmm. what you're talking about is learning to play more efficiently so mm -hmm. you don't have to necessarily add yeah. the pressure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, I mean, pressure is always there, right. but it's always you, you need the right and the right balance of pressure. If you, if, you, if you put too much pressure, you're going to get swollen lips. Right. The next day, you're going to have a terrible time warming up, right. and you're going to be very angry with yourself and very frustrated. <laughs> you don't need to right. do that. You know, there's a certain way to play where you have the right amount of pressure for any range or any volume. Right. You know, a lot of guys in big big bands or in bigger groups, mm -hmm. they always say or complain about uh, that they can't hear themselves because the band is too loud, right. which is, you know, sometimes the case. Right, definitely. But uh, with the pressure in your head that you feel, you know you're playing loud enough. Right. I have this, this one thing that I do when I play with salsa bands uh, where I will use earplugs for the whole set. Yes. You know, and because. I. Because uh, you know you, you can't you really overpower. Want to go deaf. Well, you don't, not just that, but you, you can't really overpower uh, you know three percussionists. Right. You know, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. You I can, think that's really important. That's an important thing I learned a long time ago. Is that uh, uh, there's different. I had a jazz experience and a classical experience. Uh, uh, I remember, uh, it, but basically, I want to focus uh, this on continue to talk about what you do. But basically. What it is, you have to let if you're working, in, let the engineer mm -hmm. figure out how to the trumpet to be heard. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. not you. You play what's good for you. Mm -hmm. You don't try to overdo it just because you're having a bad acoustical environment. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, when you, when you hear the guys like you know Manuel Ferguson, I mean, he yes, he was a loud player, mm -hmm. but some of the long sets he did, he wasn't always playing real loud. He was playing into the microphone, and right. the microphone was really, really hot. Right. You know, you can hear him talking, you know, ten feet away from the <laughs> microphone. But the thing is, he uh -huh. was always uh, always having good posture always always control when he was playing those high notes right you know and the same thing i mean he was playing a certain volume where he knew he wasn't going to crack right you know and if you look at his videos he's always controlled yes you know always yeah. controlled yeah he, know. yeah he was one of the first people to talk about this uh, different kinds of breathing mm -hmm. as a, and uh, i think a lot of trumpet players certainly learned from what yeah he, definitely all right so i guess we're getting close to wrapping this up here uh there's so much more he has to say uh and and play uh, let's see, uh, do you have any things that you have memorized at all that you... Ooh, that's going to be rough. Oh, where, where can we go listen to you? Are you on YouTube or something like that? I'm, we'll be on soon. I mean, okay. I have myself on YouTube. You're going to do more now. The hope this is going to encourage Definitely, you to do yes. more. Definitely, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to thank my guest, uh, Javier Gonzalez. 
Thank you, Javier. No, thank you for having me. It's great to uh, have you here, and uh, and I hope this encourages you to uh, yes. <laughs> to do more. And I know a lot of people are going to be very interested in uh, in seeing and hearing uh, more of you, your trumpet, and and uh, your mm -hmm. teaching. Okay, thanks again. All right, thank you. Okay.